Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll learn how to easily set up and slice and print a temperature tower in Prusa Slicer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to use a cool Prusa Slicer feature to configure a temperature tower. A temperature tower is a test print you can use to figure out the temperature at which a filament prints the best. You can find several different kinds, and what I'm going to show you should work with any of them, but I like using this model from Gazoli on Thingiverse. It's the PLA Plus version, one of the four complete towers in Thing number 2729076. It shows how the filament handles overhangs, bridging, stringing, and small details at a range of temperatures. It should start printing at 235 degrees Celsius, and each level of the tower is 10 millimeters tall. As the tower grows, each successive level is 5 degrees Celsius lower than the one before, until the final level is printed at the lowest printing temperature. But if you import this model, or any temperature tower model, into Prusa Slicer, and slice it and print it, it's going to print at whatever temperature the selected filament wants to print at. In other words, just because a tower's level says 225 degrees on the side doesn't mean that level automatically prints at 225 degrees. So we need a way to tell Prusa Slicer that we want to start printing this at 235 degrees Celsius, and we need to tell it to set the temperature to the appropriate value at the start of each new level. It used to be that you'd have to use some clever if-then conditional code placed in Prusa Slicer's before layer change custom G-code field in the printer preset to tell it when to adjust the temperature. And if you forgot to remove the code afterward, you'd end up printing your next model using the temperature tower's temperatures so the nozzle's temperature would drop by 5 degrees after every 10 millimeters of Z-height. Been there, done that. But this method uses Prusa Slicer's recently added ability to add custom G-code at specific layers in the sliced model's preview. So we can use that to set the nozzle temperature at each level of a temperature tower. Let's start by loading this temp tower model into Prusa Slicer. And to set the starting temperature, I find it's easiest to modify and save an existing filament preset. Let's take a quick trip into the filament settings tab. In here, select Generic PLA, and set the nozzle temperature for both first layer and other layers to 235 degrees Celsius. Then save it with the name of Temperature Tower Start 235C. I mean, what you call it is totally up to you, but this one makes sense for me. Now, with this filament selected, the print will start at 235 degrees. Switching back to the Plater tab, click the Slice Now button. After slicing, Prusa Slicer switches to the preview. Using the slider on the right side of the preview, drag down through the layers to get to where the 235 degree level ends and the 230 degree level begins. On the slider, just to the right of our current position, there is an orange hexagon with a plus sign inside. Right click on that to get a small menu of options. If you accidentally left-click on it instead, Prusa Slicer will assume you want to insert a color change there, and the color picker will appear. Or at least it does on the Mac version. If this happens, close the color picker, and you'll see the plus in the hexagon has become an X. Left-click on the X to remove the color change. Okay, so meanwhile, back in right-click land, from that small menu of options, select Add Custom G-Code. In the dialog box that appears, we'll type the G-code to set the hot end temperature, M104 space S230. Then click the OK button. That'll set the temperature to 230 degrees at that layer. Next, scroll up through the slices to get to the last layer of the 230 degree level, which is where the temperature should start changing to 225 degrees. And again, right-click the hexagon with the plus sign and select Add Custom G-Code. 
Prusa Slicer remembers the last thing entered here, so just change the 230 to 225 and click the OK button. Keep repeating this process until you set the temperature for the final 195 degree level. Now this is almost done, but not quite. The last thing to do is to click the Slice Now button again. Wait, so why do we have to slice twice? Well, the first time is so we know where the layers are. You can't add custom G-code to a layer if there aren't any layers yet, right? And the second time applies the custom G-code. So now that the model is sliced with the custom G-code, you can export it to a file, put that on your printer's memory card, and print it. Yes, it takes about three hours to print, but when it's done, you'll have a good idea of how your filament behaves at nine different temperatures. And you can keep it with the spool of filament either in its bag or in its box, or in its bag and in its box if you have both, so you can refer to it when you want to. I mean, some filaments have different surface finishes depending on the printing temperature, and you may want one look versus another depending on what model you're wanting to print. So that's an easy way to set up one of these temperature test prints in Prusa Slicer without having to type in a towering amount of programming code. Just pick the layers you want to change the temperature on and add a simple G-code command. Well, 3D printing prints, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.